Well, we're here at Winton Motor Raceway. The birds are in the trees. There's cars out on the track. Where else would you rather be? And I'm with one of the legends of Australia <laughs> motorsport. He is John Bow. And John, you're up here testing Mustang Sally this yeah. uh, today for the uh, upcoming Touring Car Masters. But also, we're going to see you down this weekend down to the Phillip Island Historic Classic as we celebrate 50 years of the Mustang. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the, the Mustang Sally, this is my fifth year with it and uh, she's had a whole new refurb, refresh by Synergy Race Engines who look after it for me. We've done a new livery, Scotty Yorston, I think you know Scotty, he, he's done the livery and it looks awesome, you know, the, uh, the colour reflects Wilson Security's new corporate colours, the blue and the yellows for Dunlop Super Dealers, so it looks like a Swedish flag to be honest, but it, but it looks good, so I'm quite happy with it, we haven't done much today so far, just betting brakes in and uh, you know just you got to massage Mustang Sally you got to treat her with respect. The thing about Mustangs is I mean you know, for people of our generation they have a very special place when you look at it I mean break it down I mean they're really sort of you know falcons with delusions of grandeur <laughs> but you know at the same time if you grew up with them I mean did you ever think you'd be behind the wheel of, of this particular sort of this particular sort of Mustang? Look, honestly, I, I've told this story before, but the real the reason I got this Mustang was because as a kid, I watched Alan Moffat drive his Coca-Cola Mustang at Simmons Plains, and it was cutting edge stuff, a beautiful looking car, it still is. So I always had this soft spot for Mustangs, and, and uh, when this car became available, uh, one of the founding. Uh, directors of Touring Car Masters, Drew Margett, had it. He had it built and it was very well constructed. So ever since then, I've had a great time. I think together, her and I have won uh, nearly 60 races in Touring Car Masters. So she's a, she's a bit of a legend in her own bathwater, really. <laughs> You mentioned Alan Moffat's uh, Mustang, and it too is going to be at Phillip Island this weekend. Yeah, I believe so. We're going to take the Mustang, uh, Sally, down there just to do some, some demo laps, uh, just because it's the year of, you know, the 50 year of the Mustang. But, um, you know, to me, it's a race car. It is, it, even though it, it's a pretty looking race car and it's quite purposeful, um, at the end of the day, race cars are judged on how they go, and, you know, that's what I'm more interested in is how it performs. Yeah. Let's go back a bit to in your career. I mean, uh, how far? So about, well, let's, <laughs> let's go back to when you originally got involved and when you got interested in motor racing. Do you remember that that, that moment when you suddenly decided, <laughs> "Yeah, hang on, this is this is a lot better than sort of footy or cricket." My uh, my memory is not that good. Um, I had uh, a, a racing family, so my dad used to race. I always went to the race tracks in Tassie as a kid as far back as I can remember. So I just grew up in that environment. But as, a, as far as racing goes, I didn't ever harbour any ambitions to be a racing driver, but it just at, at 15, you know, it sort of happened. We, him and I went halves in a little Formula V and, and you know, here I am still doing it. I don't know whether that means I'm crazy or whether I'm sensible, I don't know. But I, I'm, uh, I'm quite blessed that I can still race, race at a reasonable level, uh, you know, have fun with my friends. Uh, and still be competitive, so you know, I guess it's pretty good. You went through Formula V, you went uh, right through the open wheeler ranks, and yeah. you even did some international racing. I mean, I seem to remember you racing once at, at Long Beach. Yeah. Do you regret not sort of taking that any that step further and continuing on with the, the international career? Um, well, I didn't honestly know how to, you know, it was a... I lived in Tassie, and, and it was, you know, those times were no mobile phones, no computers, you know, no fax machines even really in those days, so I don't really have any regrets about it. Obviously I, I would have loved to have been a Formula One driver, but you know, when you when you come from a country town you don't really understand that much and you know, I guess a, a lot of people in that era, the 70s and the 80s were getting killed too, so I'm still here, I've got all my limbs still, touch wood, um, you know, I mean it is what it is, I, I'm quite happy with my racing life. And the fact that I can still do it, that's pretty important to me. Of course, the, the switch to touring cars came about and was mostly through a guy called Dick Johnson. Yeah. Now, you and Dick formed you know, an amazing partnership, not just on the track as well, but it seems that you have a very special relationship with Dick. Yeah, we do. I mean, actually, the first person that gave me a drive in a, in a touring car was John Shepard, who was the legendary team manager of the Holden dealer team and then ran the Volvo team. So my first touring car drive was a Volvo, uh, which was actually a very good car, but, but I'm, I'm known for my 
partnership, I guess, with Dick Johnson. We're still friends, you know. I'm, I was part of his family. I, I spent 11 years as a co-driver with him. We never once had an argument. He's, uh, he's a good bloke. You know, what he, what he sees, what he, what you get. He's not a, he doesn't, uh, you know, coat things with sugar. He, he just says it like it is, which I like. And, uh, you know, I just did a couple of uh, hot lap drive days at Bathurst with him. We do a few things like that. I, uh, last year I hung out with his team a bit because of uh, Wilson Security who support me and supported him last year. Now this year Wilson Security are going to be with the Volvo team. So it's sort of I've gone full circle. You know, I start in a Volvo and I'll be hanging around at the back of the Volvo garage, not driving. <laughs> so of all the cars that you've driven over the years, which one would you say is your favourite? If you had the choice oh. and said this is, the, this is the car, which one would it be? Look, it's a really interesting question. I, I think uh, I had a very s s fondness, serious fondness for the Sierras because it was my first real race winning touring car era period, you know, and uh, we won Bathurst, Dick and I won Bathurst in it. But last year we did a, a story for Unique Cars magazine, Dick and I, with the two Sierras which belong in the Bowden collection. We did them at Lakeside and we drove both the cars and, and took some photographs and things. and. Uh, all I can say it sort of reminded me of a girlfriend I had about 25 years ago. You know, it wasn't quite the same as I remember. <laughs> so I said to him, were these really like this? He said, yeah, it's exactly the same. The car from 92 was exactly the same. So yeah, things have come a long way since, since that era. So whilst I still have a fondness for them, I don't have any great desire to race them again. We've seen you, we mentioned Phillip Island coming up this weekend, the historics, we've seen you uh, behind the wheel of a few historic cars. Um, any chance of seeing you this weekend? Uh, yeah, I hope so. Um, it's, it's a matter of parts. Uh, my friend Joe Collegia is racing his Corvette in Group S, which is the car we took to Laguna Seca a couple of years ago. And hopefully we're going to take it to Goodwood. So originally Peter Brock drove that car at Goodwood in 2005. Oh, it was Brock's one, yeah. yeah, it was, yeah that was the car. So we're going to, we've been invited back, so the plan is to, for Joe and I to go over to Goodwood, which would be great. It'd be like a bucket list That's thing for the for revival, me. is it? For the revival race meeting. Yeah. Um, so I'll be down there helping Joe, and he's got a little 74 March Formula One car, which I'm hoping to drive, but we're still waiting on a couple of bits to come from England for it. So uh, that's a, you know, I, I'm finally driving a Formula One car 40 years too late. <laughs> Well, and it's one of the most beautiful Formula One cars. That it is very look, simple compared com to now. Compared you know. to what you see today, which is uh, you know, like a of, spaceship. Isn't yes, it? yeah, yeah. Yes. it's it's great to drive. It's lovely. It's very pure, you know, and, and it's it's got quite good grip. It's got big tyres and it's got wings, but it hasn't got any undercar stuff. It hasn't got any the current F1 cars are so dependent on downforce. So it's nice. It, I love. I drive anything I can as long as I know it's prepared properly. I just love driving race cars. You've just come off of us into the Bathurst 12 hour as well. That is a race that has just grown and, and grown. Yeah, and has, Reece yeah. just announced the, the dates for next year. Yeah. Just recently, and the accommodation is already totally sold out within, I think it was about 14 minutes of, really? of solely yeah. of, of, of announcing. How, what do you think of that race and how big can that race become? Well, I think it, it's, it can become huge. Obviously, it's pretty big now. It can, I can see the day in a couple of years where it'll just be GT cars, which will probably alleviate some of the traffic problems. But having said that, traffic is part of racing. So, you know, if it's there, you deal with it. Um, I think it was a big, big punt by James O'Brien a few years ago when he changed it to a GT cars. It was also a big punt for Liquid Molly or Motor Active, which is Australia's distributor for Liquid Molly to take it on as a as a promotional part of their marketing and it's paid off in spades. I mean it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We got factory teams, we had 35 I think GT cars this year and I, I can see it being 55 GT cars so you know it, it, it's the, the reason it is, is is because of the track. You know Bathurst is the the racetrack in the southern hemisphere without a doubt and one of the iconic racetracks in the world and you know if it was somewhere else if it was at Eastern Creek or Sandown somewhere it wouldn't have the same impact but, but everybody wants to race at Bathurst everybody so that's why they come here and it's an interesting race so it was a fascinating race this this uh, year just gone but I think that there needs to be a bit of a tidy up of the driver standards some of those European drivers are very disrespectful 
to the guys in the slower cars, which then means that there's accidents and like we did, I don't know, 50 laps on the safety car or something, which is ridiculous. So that needs sorting out, but you know, it's, it's, it's all there, it's all there to happen. You've got a lot of uh, your drivers going around the world now in GT3 in particular. Yeah. I mean, it's been it's been an enormous success. Uh, any interest in taking part in some of those other races overseas, like the Nurburgring 24 Hour or the Spa, or the Spa 24 Hour? Uh, well, it's always you know, like it's it's like going to Goodwood. It's like on your bucket list, but you know, it's not always possible. Jason Richards and I, we talked about doing the Nurburgring 24 Hour race together, but then of course he got sick and sick and passed away. So. It depends a bit. I drive with um, Marinello in GT. I drive with Peter Edwards, who's my friend and uh, who, you know, basically started racing four years ago as an absolute rank amateur. And I like the progress he makes. You know, I have a, a little part of all that. So I do it because of that, and I feel very grateful for it. You know, this year we drove a Bentley, which is, you know, create a lot of interest. I mean, I. What was that like to drive? I was surprised looking at it. I mean, seeing the, the pictures, <laughs> it, it always looked much bigger. But when I saw it in real life, it wasn't quite as big as I really thought it would be. But what was it like behind the wheel? Well, it was, it was actually bits of it I like a lot. Uh, I've driven the Ferrari for the last number of years. I've raced Ferrari since 95 when Ross Palmer bought one out for the GT production. So I know a lot about Ferraris, but um, I thought I found it was quite a an interesting car. There's areas that we can improve for sure, um, but there's bits of it that I like. I think it'll be a good addition to the to the local GT scene, and uh, you know I think we can improve it too. We were as fast as the factory cars, which is a feather in the you know the guys caps that ran our car, the guys from Marinella. Um, but I reckon we can make a better yet. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. But we unfortunately it was crashed out at the end, as you know. Yes. And it's, it was quite badly damaged, and that was caused by a European bloke with no patience. So, you know, I, for, I, I, for, I owe him one. <laughs> for, for what it's worth, I believe he has apologised via Twitter. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I owe him one. Well, we look forward to that uh, at next year's Bathurst 12 hour, <laughs> if not before. But for now, uh, John, best of luck for season 2015. And once again, thanks for joining us in Pit Lane. Thanks, Brett. Good on you, mate. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Thanks a lot.